Ronnie Montserrat. Could you briefly introduce yourself, your dad, for people who might not know your legendary name? Well, my dad's name is Peter Montserrat. He was called the East Trumpeter of India after the great Harry James. We are a family of seven brothers and two sisters. All of us are musicians. Two play the trumpet, one play the sax, trombone, piano, bass, drum, guitar. So it was because of my father's real grinding that we grew to become such good musicians what we are today and we thank our father for that. And of course we started a career with the great Anthony Consalves. He was our first musical teacher where I at least I studied and my elder brother studied, Joseph. Joseph studied the violin under Anthony and I studied the piano. This was in Mumbai in which years? This was in 1964. Bombay? Yeah, in Bombay. When which Anthony... Bandra. 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 He used to stay in Bandra. So my father used to be working in the films and we were actually... He put us in the bowling school. And our main aim was to become great football players because... Stanislaus or...? Uh, we were bowling yeah, in Stanislaus. And that time my heroes were Cedric and Derek, you know. Cedric used to play for... Uh, Mafarlal and no Neville and Cedric. So our main aim was to become good footballers like them. Till finally my dad saw us having the passion for football. He put us in the bowling school and bowling school we used to play a lot of games. So that passion automatically grew. So he removed us from the bowling school just to learn music and put us under Anthony Gonzalez to study music. And Anthony Gonzalez first and foremost first person he says okay you'll come to me to learn music. I was really interested in learning music. So actually that was not at all in my mind. So he says, what do you like to become when you grow big? So my <laughs> eldest brother says, I want to play for Caltex. Because Neville used to play for Caltex and Cedric. And what about you, Ronnie? I want to play for Moffat Lal. He goes and tells my dad at home the next day at the recording. He says, you're wasting your time. You did a wrong thing by removing them from the boarding school. So my dad is wondering what happened. like you know. So he says, they want to become footballers, not musicians. So the way the shouting we got from my dad the very next day when he came back from recording, that was the turning point of our life, you know, that we had to sort of take music as a career. And that grinding that the teacher like Anthony Gonzalez is so strict you know, and precise in whatever he teaches. And so is my father. They come from the old school, you know, they all self-taught musicians. But I mean, I would say like, you know, since I grew up now and they could sit with any international musician of those days like Anthony Gonzalez was called the Pagani of India the great one my dad they labelled him as the Harry James of India so no one taught them but their own interest like how they developed that skills to come to that standard they would fit in any international band you know for that matter so they were very strict and passionate about music yeah so that's how we were trained and today whatever we are you know thanks to our parents like you know each one of us have made a name. All of us are playing in the film industry with established music directors like Lata Mangishkar, Kishore Kumar. We did a lot of tours with them, Bappi Lehri, Lakshmigan, Parallel. So our main grounding was the film industry, which is our basic bread and butter. Ronnie, you mentioned something a little while back, which was, uh, you know, the 1995 mm-hmm. rebirth of Lona as an artist in Goa. And that's something I remember very clearly. My wife and me were going on our bike and they were these crowds of people going to Miramar. Miramar yeah. Some of them shouting out Lona songs on the way on their bikes. Right. Tell us about it, how it came about. Well, I started my career with Chris Perry, the great Chris Perry, great musician, composer, arranger, good trumpet player. In 1969, 70, 71, I used to do a lot of gigs with Chris Perry and Lona. Then in 71, I moved out to Delhi, started my own band and my own career. When I came back in 1979 to join Braz Gonzalez in Bombay, Thereafter, I started my career in Bombay, playing all the nightclubs, and I did an album with Sukreen, a theatrist's son, you know, A.B. At, at uh, Siddhate Goa. And there the media was there, and the media were whole time talking to me about Lorna. I said, I've come to do an album for Sukreen's son, but they're more interested in Lorna. And I disconnected from Lorna. Once I went, in 71, I went to Delhi and things like that. I came in the film industry. So there was no connection you know then when they spoke about Lorna at this at the Siddharthi hotel I think they I said why don't I go back to Bombay and try try out you know because I heard a lot of reports about Lorna like you know I mean all negative yeah you know a lot of negative talk so I said let me yeah so I went there to a place 
and I knocked on the door and you know because she had no phone and I didn't have any contact to her. So I went and knocked on the door and she says, Who's that? I, I just whistled out, you know. And they're saying she says, Must be some musician. Well, that was your that was a code, you know. Yeah, signature, you know, code, oh. musician whistle. When we need to call a musician in a crowd, we just whistle this code. So everybody would turn back and know that, you know, this is a... So, she said, who's that? So I said, Ronnie. Who? I said, Ronnie Monsa. Ronnie Monsa? After so many years, where are you come? So finally, she opened the door and let me in. And I went in the intention to do an album, actually, with Lorna. Because when I did Sukreen's album in Konkani, it's called Piche. I said, let me do an album with Lorna. So that's how I actually went to a place. And since Goa was longing to know what happened to the nightingale of Goa, I went to a place. And she entered and she sat down there and I sat across her. And so she said, Ronnie, how are things? And what brought you here? So I'm looking at her and I'm saying, I've come to meet Lorna. My goodness. Means you she, didn't recognize. She, she didn't so recognize. Changed. Yeah, she was so changed, you know what I mean? And... Uh, she says, I'm Lorna. I got a shock of my life. I said, oh God, I have, I'm going to do an album with her at this state. Like, you know what I mean? To think that she's going to do an album. So I could not uh, open out and say that oh, I've, co- I've come here to do an album. No, no, you've come here with some reason. Either you've not just come after so many years to my place. And then, okay. We sat down and they said, I had to break the ice. And I said, okay, come on, Lorna. I haven't come to do an album with you. She said, album? Ronnie, just forget about it. She says, I'm just, I'm totally rusty. She says, I haven't I sang see. for 23 years, you know. Wow. And what are you thinking about doing an album? I said, okay, for old times, sake, Lorna sing one of your songs. So she sang one of her songs, which Emiliano de Cruz had comp- composed for her. Which one? One of the songs, I can't okay. remember, yeah. And how was it? Well, she sang it and, you know, the spark is, was still there. Like, I she's see. an inborn singer, like, you know, I mean, you cannot just lose that touch, you know, all of a sudden. Though she's not been singing, but I okay. said, uh, Lorna, I said, See, when the spark is still there, let's, we just have to tap it again. She said, no, Ronnie, I won't be able to. I said, no, you're still sounding great. You're just a little rusty. That's about all. We can bring it together. And she, she turned me down. She said, no, Ronnie, I won't be able to sing, blah, blah, blah. And this contract scene was there and things like that. I walked out. Again, after 15 days, again, I went there to her place. And her mother was, like, almost bedridden. and she was in the bed. Okay. And no one ever stepped into a house when they went the first time, whether it may be a producer, maybe a scriptwriter or literary or anybody do anything with her it was always a no for anybody but okay. she knew me since I played with her with Chris you know so that respect was there for me and she says okay but still she turned me down then I went the second time to her she opened the door and she sees me back again oh god Ronnie not the same topic I said no no let me come and say, let me chat with you I sat down there and we had a chat Again, I could not convince her because she was headstrong that she doesn't want to come Also the reluctance and the fear. Yeah, the fear, like, you know, I mean. And then the third time I went to her place, again, maybe in a month and a half or two months, I said, let me just close the deal, you know. Like, I went back to her place and this time her mother got up from the seat, you know, she was lying, she was always, like, lying down on the bed. She just sat down and telling Lorna, this is God sent. No one has stepped into this house, you know. Mm -hmm. Ever you close the door for anybody else, no one has come back. And this boy has come the third time. Please, for my sake, don't say no to him. And then she was like, you know, in tears. I like, see. you know, the mother's taking my side room. And I started smiling because like, oh, the mother's backing, you know. And that's how this whole thing cropped up. And then... Persistence pays. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I had a lot of patience to go through what, you know. I, then I should literally go all the way from Bandra after my recording studio late in the night at 11 o'clock to a place just to make us sing open out, you know. There was a lot of grind we took, you know, like to bring that album back. And then she got that confidence and that's how Halal Honor came back in 1995. What's, what's your take on Nacho Yakumpa, Well, Nacho Yakumpa, sir, that's also another story in itself. Story in itself, like, you know, because after I bought Lorna back in 1995, Badroi sort of, you know, clicked by saying that I grew up listening to Chris Perry songs. And he says, Ronnie, after you bring Lorna back, I, that inspired me to do this movie, Nacha Kumpasa. You know? And he used to call me over to his place and we did a lot of sharing, the chemistry of uh, when I used to play with Chris Perry and Lorna, you know, because we played for about two years, two How and a half years. I was about played? 17, 16, 17. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and that's how the seed was sown and Bartway started, you know, sort of getting to put all the songs together where he got a nice script together. The songs related to the whole movie actually by itself. And that's how Nacha Kumpasar was born, you know, and uh, I think... Serious chap and talented the work also. Bad right. Yeah, yeah. He did a fantastic job. I mean, he took... He works in his own time and space, I you know. See. So, but uh, he brought 
Konkani music to a different level altogether. And that made a benchmark for all the other guys started uh, producing pictures and you know, after Nacha Kumpasa. And we got a lot of uh, awards worldwide, you know, for this picture nomination. At least I was uh, nominated for the Oscar award for the for the background music, not I of see. Chris Perry's song. But Chris Perry's songs were always recreated, you know. Yeah. They were not my original song. But for the background score, I was really? put in the 115. From 880 entries, uh, entries I came to the last 112, I see. which is a great achievement. And with all Oscar. big names like John Williams and you name it, like... So that was good this thing, but in Milan I got it for the best score and a couple of the plays also festivals in year and there. So it was a good feeling. Ronnie, when you look back on your career, which are the high points? What would you remember always? High point there was for me because getting a break to work with Nacho, uh, with uh, Lata Mangeshkar and Kishore Kumar. I did a tour with them, and then I did tours with Bappi Lehri a lot. You know, these were like you know highlight. I mean, at that young age, I got a chance to tour the world okay. with all these great legends. You know, and then. God has helped me in a way to tap people, like, you know, like, I bought Lorna back after 23 years. Then I did an album with Vala Darsa sisters, such talented girl from Goa. They Which just one, that uh, Italian Angkor, one? Ang- Angkor, it's called. Because they were there for Lorna's release, you know, along with Remu. And they were just sitting there and singing. Yeah. So I said, uh, Vala Darsa sisters, have you come out with any album? So they said, no, many people have promised us, but nothing has ever happened. But Ronnie, if you say that you'll do an album... I'm sure it'll work out if you can bring Lorna back after 23 years. And that's the time I cracked the deal. I said, okay, I'm doing an album. Within one and a half month, we completed the album. I went to Bombay, I went to BMG Crescendo, met the A&R manager and cracked the deal and I all see. other sisters. Then Sunidhi Chauhan, I gave a break. Sonalikam, I gave a break. You know, so all these people, like, you know, I mean, I feel like the Lord has tapped me too. And last question, very short. Uh, yeah. What is the state of Goan music today? Where is it going? Goan music, you see, diaspora expats and expats. Uh, see, there's a lot of talent in Goa, you know, yeah. excellent talent, uh, like uh, musician-wise, singers-wise. Now I'm trying to do work. I did a song lately called a Goinkarpan song, I see. where yeah, I got I 38 singers yeah, from Goa on board. And uh, after Nachan Kumpasa, I've done this picture, Glory. And now I'm trying to do work here in Goa with Goan musicians and singers, Great. instead of having the full project being done in Bombay. Thank you so, so much. All the best. All the best, of course.